That's Bill. That's Will. And today on the Bill and Will Show, the Black Friday topic of the week is why is hip hop bad for the youth of the black culture, Gibson? I don't, I, I mean, I'm, I, I don't understand why Charlemagne, Big Mike, Snoop Dogg, I don't understand why these guys are the voice of black America. I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense. These guys, now, let me say this. These guys are not dumb and they're not stupid. So let's just, let's just get that off the top. Uh, they have a very good platform that they're speaking on in terms of what black people need in order to uh, get ahead in America. But the problem is, Nobody's taking them serious. See, every time politicians go to get something from the black community, they go to rappers. Why are they not going to other politicians? Why are they not going to activists, black activists, and asking them, what do y'all need? Why are they not going to Black Lives Matter? What do y'all need? Why, why are they going to Cardi B and asking her, why is Cardi B, why does she have a, a platform to sit down with the president and talk to, to him? That doesn't make sense to me. So I start thinking about it. You're not taking us serious when you do that. When you, Donald Trump or Joe Biden or any person running for political office and you go to Cardi B or or Big Mike, or one of those, you're not taking us serious. Because all you want is to, is to get, a, is to get a, a, a place on the media where you went and talked to some black people. Because for some reason in black America, and I'm not gonna even, I'm not gonna even I, I hate to even say that, but for a lack of a better way to say it, they think that those rappers speak for all black people, but they don't. They speak for the thugs and the hooligans, but they don't speak for black people. See, Big Mike and Ice Cube, they don't speak for me because we're not even in the same position. I would rather than, I would rather than go and talk to Cornell West and say, hey, Cornell, write us up a game plan for black America that, was, that will help black America to catch up these 400 years that they behind and have a legitimate opportunity in America for the American dream. Go to whoever you need to go to, Thomas Sewell and these people, and, and, and they could go to Thomas Sewell and ask him, help us write a game plan. It would, to me, it would make more sense that they would go to them. When you go to rappers, you're not, you're not taking us serious because they, they represent a certain part of black America, not black America in its totality. We got to get away from that. For me, to... it's, for me, it's just the same as these guys, they, these rappers. And it's not all rappers because you have some rappers out there that don't speak about the violence and don't glorify the sins of, of all the negative stuff out there from, the, from calling women the B word to glorifying sex to doing, to selling drugs, killing your own people. It's, it's, it's other rappers out there that don't speak about that type of stuff. So I'm not speaking about the most the conscious rappers and the guys that don't glorify that stuff. I'm talking to the gangster rappers, the ones that every line is shooting somebody or um, pitting, pitting black versus black, like you ain't got this, so that means you ain't this type of rap. And um, it's, just, it's just sad. It's just sad when you see it. But they go to these people that at, at one point in their life wanted to be 
El Pablo Escobar or whatever his name was, you know, uh, wanted to be uh, El Chapo, wanted to be um, a drug dealer and take over the world like Pablo Escobar wanted to do. He was he sold drugs and after that he was in in politics. So they so they think because they have a spot like on, on them they 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 get a a pass to speak for me, to speak for you, to speak for everybody else, which, like you said, they're just being used as a puppet. Uh, one of my favorite rappers was was used as a puppet by Donald Trump this past election, Lil Wayne. Um, they see how many followers you, they, they, they see how many followers you got, they see how bright your spotlight is, but just because your spotlight is bright does not mean that you going to the respect of people that are going to change the laws because that, that's what really matters. It doesn't matter who wants to go talk to you. You are not in a position to change any laws. You're not in a position to change anything, but just change narratives. That's all it is. Uh, Ice Cube um, being one of these guys that I don't know what his education is. I don't know if he has, if he has the right, type of education to actually go do what he wants to go do and what he's trying to do right now. I just know Ice Cube for no Vaseline, um, being with uh, NWA and running three on three basketball uh, for the big three and making movies. I've never seen him in a politician's office trying to go run for city council, trying to go and change some laws, which is the ultimately is what's gonna help the black the black man and the black woman on this earth or the minorities period. So when, when they go to these rappers and they go to these type of people, it's like you said, it's just, it's just the, the circus. You're just giving somebody a show and it's not the right path to, to change. We don't have any more Marcus Garvey's. We don't have any more Malcolm X. We don't have any more Martin the Kings because those guys now are like you said, Carly B. Um, T.I., Lil Wayne. Um, let, let me interject right here. I, I just Googled it. Black activists. Martin Luther King, dead. Rosa Parks, dead. Ella Baker, dead. Stokely Carmichael, dead. Reverend Jeffy, Jesse Jackson, dead. Frederick Douglass, Fannie Mae Hammer, W.E.B. Du Bois, Mega Evers, all these people that I'm, these, these, they dead. So what, what we're saying is, it's about 20 people on this list. All of them dead. So we don't have anybody. But we do have some people, but nobody's taking them serious. Thomas Sewell, Jason Riley. We got people that we need to be talking to. But uh, Big Mike, mm-mm. Ice Cube, mm-mm. T.I., mm-mm. Uh, Charlemagne, mm -mm. Colin Kaepernick, mm -mm. Mm -mm. see, that's that's not helping us. What's his name? Joe Biden said, "If you not if you don't vote for me, you're not black." He, come on, man. They're not taking us serious. I think one thing about it is they they scared they they scared. A lot of people are scared to take that to take that role of a dead nigga. For me to to be to be blunt, they seen everybody that you name on your list that was out there in the forefront, and they died. So it's kind of hard now you um, somebody to step out there because they're afraid, which was intentional. It was intentional. I think um, someone has to. Somebody got to go first. Somebody got to go first. Somebody, somebody got to go first. Many have went first, and they're not here anymore. But we can't learn from those guys anymore physically. So, so here, here's the problem. We don't, we don't need to approach it the way that we've been approaching this problem. Because no other nationality in the United States, and there's hundreds of nationalities in the United States. I, I don't want to say that because there's only seven nationalities. But we got people from hundreds of countries in the United States but no other nationality out of those seven are having problems except for us. We're the only one that's having problems. So we need to change our strategy. 
why aren't Mexican people having a problem in the United States? Why aren't Asian people having a problem in the United States? Nobody's having a problem other than us. Europeans are not having a problem. Asians are not having a problem. You know, nobody's having a problem over here except for us. So we, what we need to do is stop doing what we're doing because it's not working. And we need to look and see what they're doing. I like what you brought up to me the other day about the Jewish people. They're not having a problem. But they got a good system in place to where they help each other to get to the top of the pinnacle. The Mexican people, they're not having a problem. The Democratic Party is bending over backwards to take care of DACA. DACA takes care of the Mexican people in this country. But, the, that, the, but to me, DACA is, is smoke and mirrors. It's, it's a, it's a, what we call that thing that the Mexican people use when they go to a party that hit it and got a lot of candy in it. Pinata. Pinata. They're using DACA as a pinata, and everybody's looking at the pinata while the Mexicans do what they need to do over here. And I'm not talking bad about the Mexicans. Don't, don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is we need to adopt a similar strategy, is what I'm saying. It's out there. I think the strategies are out there for us for sure. The strategies are right in front of our faces. Even African people that come over here, African people, they're not struggling in the United States. Not at all. So the, 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 one of the, one of the um, fastest growing economy wise as a, as a people over here are Nigerians. They, they come, not, Nigerians come over here and they flourish. They don't have the same parts we have, but see here, here's where we need to, we need to stop doing what we're doing and, and adopt a different strategy. And Thomas Sewell and Jason Raleigh, I think they have the perfect strategy. You, you stop being a minority, stop being black, stop being a victim, stop being all those things and just get your mind made up that this is what I'm gonna do. And then we need to work together. That crab mentality, that only applies in the black community. No other nationality uses that phrase, crab mentality. No other nationality uses that. We, we took that and every, when you say that, everybody knows you're talking about black people. Black so, people, purple or, or, or cripple or blood, speaking so people, it. Look, people looking at me now and saying, well, Billy, what are you talking about? What strategy are you talking about? Okay, well, let, you know what, let's go and get into that. So let's look at the Jewish people. When the Jewish people, when somebody is in the family and they're grown now, they go to school, they say, okay, what are you gonna do? I want, oh, I'm gonna be a doctor. Well, okay, guess what? So now everybody in the Jewish community, they gonna go to you. So you got a built-in fan base off the top. Well, you know, I'm only 22. Okay, so I'll tell you what you're gonna do. You're gonna stay with me and you're gonna work in the family business and you're gonna raise I'll save $10,000 and then you're going to go out and buy your own house. And we're going to help you put furniture and stuff like that in the house. This is their strategy. Mexican people, hey, you're going to come over here. However you got over here, you're going to come over here and you're going to live with me. Four or five families living in one house. And you're going to work at some oil field service company or some oil company, and you're gonna save X amount of dollars, 10, 15, $20,000, and then we're going to build you a house. And when you build that house, we're gonna move in with you, and then you're gonna help 10 people do the same thing that we just did. And they're gonna save that money, then they're gonna buy a house, then they're gonna buy a house, and they're gonna buy a house. All the houses that I sold since 2013, I have never sold a house to a black person. I have never sold a house to a white person. Every house that I ever sold went to a Mexican. All of the Habitat of Humanity houses that they built on the South Side over on Fairgrounds Road, every one of them houses went to a Mexican or, uh, or uh, what do you, uh, not, not Vietnamese, but uh, I, I don't, Asian is not who they are. I, I don't know, but let's just go with Asian. A Mexican or Asian, primarily 90% uh, Mexicans and the rest of them is something else, but, but they're not black people. Because we too busy walking around in night clothes at two o'clock in the afternoon, 
with some Bugs Bunny house shoes and talking loud, you know, at the restaurant. That you, you, I asked for mayonnaise on my burger and you put mustard on there. I'm just keeping it real, man, because this is happening all over the country. Now it's better in the, in the Eastern countries, not countries, states, but it's the same problem. And, you know, and saying, well, we need more black politicians. We need more black, you know, policemen. We need more black this, that, now. That's not helping us either because Chicago, Baltimore, everybody over there is black. You got a black mayor, you got a black police chief, you got black city councilman, black, black, black. Everybody's black. And it's one of the poorest cities in the United States. Chicago, black mayor, black city council, black, black, black. Everybody's black, one of the worst cities in the United States. So being black, putting black people in position, that's not helping us. What we need is accountability. Did you do the job? Yes or no? If no, you need to get out, you need to get the next man in there. If the answer is yes, then let's keep going. It's real simple, but we got to change our strategy. Our strategy is not give me a handout, give me reparations, give me, give me, give me, you know, no. The, the, the solution is I'm going to do this for myself. The first thing I'm going to do is get an education. I'm going to graduate from high school. That's the very first thing I'm going to do. And then I'm going to either go to college, I'm going to go to a trade school, or I'm going to the military. And when I get out of that, then I'm going to get me a job somewhere. And I'm going to use that job as a mentor. If I go to, if I go to work, as a school teacher, if I, if I go to work in the oil field, if I go to work as whatever I go to work, I'm going to use that job as a mentor. How do I do this job? What does it entail? What are you doing? I'm an accountant. What are you doing as an accountant? Well, I'm taking all the invoices that I get from the people we do work and I categorize them. What are you doing? Oh, I'm a janitor. What are you doing? You know, and learn what, what does it take to run this business? After you be there four, five, three years, whatever you, you think you need to do, then open up your own business, doing the exact same thing that they do. That's what the Mexicans did. When I first went to the oil field, it was nothing but white people out there. They did every job in the oil field. Here we are 15 years later, there's no white people in the oil field. They all in the office way up high somewhere. Everybody in the oil field is Mexicans and blacks. White trash. We got we to gotta do better, man. We got to stop blaming the man and start taking some responsibility for ourselves and say, this is what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get my education. I'm going to do this. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to get me a mentor. I'm going to get somebody to help me. If I go to the bank and say, hey, I need a loan to buy me a house, and they say, no, I'm not going to get mad. All oh, you're doing is because I'm black. No, I'm doing it because you've got a 520 credit score. So I need to go back to the drawing table and fix my credit score. Uh, Lexington Law, fixmycredit.com, whatever I gotta do, I'm gonna fix that. Then I'm gonna go back to the bank and say, now I got a, a 680 credit score. I wanna take out a loan to buy a house. No, because now you owe more money than you making. You in tremendous, okay, I'm gonna go back to the drawing board and I'm gonna get rid of some of this debt. I'm gonna get rid of this car, I'm gonna get rid of this motorcycle, I'm gonna get rid of these jet magazine subscriptions i'm gonna get rid of all this stuff then i'm gonna go back say now my debt to income ratio is exactly where it should be under 30 percent so what, what what's your excuse now well you know now i don't have no excuse i got to give you the loan thank you and then i'm gonna take my son and my daughter and i'll say okay y'all going to college you're going to trade school or you're going to the military but you finna get up out of here so they go somewhere and they come back. Say, Mom, I finished. I did my four years in the military. Okay, now I want you to get a job and you're going to stay with me for four or five years and you're going to save this much money and then you're going to buy you a house. You're not going to be renting. Renting is garbage. Renting helps somebody else. You need to help yourself. Get you a house. You got your $10,000 saved? Yes. Okay, now go get you a house. This, this, is, this is what we need to be doing. Asking the man for a handout, that's where we're going wrong because nobody else is doing that. Now, I but I tell you what does happen. The Mexican people, for an example, they looking at you. They say, hey, why don't you go up there and ask him for a handout? So then you go up there, I need a handout. And they kill you. And then, and then he step up and get the handout. <laughs> 
See, that's where the problem come in. He gonna get the handout. We just stop that mess because it don't work for us. Stop blaming so that's the man and figure a way how to become the man. Huh? Stop blaming the man and figure out a way how to put how to become the man. That's exactly it. And it, and then we don't really need to figure it out because it's already been figured out. All we need to do is open our eyes and pay attention to what's really going on. You know, Google is your best friend. You know, so you say, well, I tried to get me a house, but they turned me down, so I don't know what to do. Let me Google it. How do I, how do I buy me a house? Google it, and it'll tell you what you need to do. First thing you need to do is have a stable income. Second thing you need you need to do is have a, a good credit score. The next thing you need to do is your debt to income ratio. It'll tell you exactly what you need to do. And then you could Google the first one. How do I get a stable job? And then you can Google the second one. How do I fix my credit? Then you can Google the third one. How do I get my debt to income ratio right? You can Google all that stuff. And in nine months to a year, you'll be where you want to be. But anyway, I don't know, man. We got to do better. So I'm, our, you know, I can't, I can't save the whole world, but I'm starting with myself and I'm starting with my son. Say, son, this is what you need to do. Then hopefully he'll get married to a woman and he'll show her what she needs to do to help him, to help them to build something. And then when they have children, my son, hopefully he will teach my grandkids the same thing that I taught him. And then they'll go out and have kids and then what I taught my son will just go down through the generation to multiply, just keep multiplying. And then some year in 4022, black people will be free, really free. With you. I'm with you on that. But anyway, that's it. We appreciate y'all listening to us on this uh, Black Friday. More episodes to come. Keep tuning in. Chime in. That's Bill, I'm Will, and we'll see you next week. Peace.